What do you think of a micro catamaran that fits into the back of a smart car? Impossible? What do you think of a quick to assemble lightweight sailing craft that glides silently along the river powered by a state-of-the-art tiny battery-driven electric outboard? Well, my name is Jeremy Brun and I set myself the challenge to build a small leisure craft capable of carrying me, my dog, my camping gear and guitar on the River Avon near Bath where I live. Now, as a boy I built a canoe and remember gliding down the upper reaches of the River Avon near Malmesbury, hovering over fish in the water and watching kingfishers and swallows fly by. So my challenge is to build a more stable two-float craft than a canoe and to build it mostly out of wood, in fact two millimetre thick aircraft plywood so you can't go much thinner than that. Now the construction also includes softwood batten to give strength where it's needed and the aircraft plywood is fillet bonded using a ribbon of glass reinforced epoxy resin around the joints. It's a simple method and gives leeway for changes such as styling the stern end of the floats. But actually I made a big mistake in ordering polyester resin instead of epoxy resin for the fillet bonding and had forgotten that a polyester is not nearly as strong, uh, well that is for bonding to wood. So I have a remedial plan up my sleeve in part two of this project that will ensure long term strength and prevent the fillets delaminating from the wood. Apart from a few initial sketches and very basic diagrams my strategy has been to just get stuck in and build the micro catamaran, solving the problems on the way. For instance, at this stage I haven't worked out exactly how I'll bolt each float section together, so I'll temporarily screw the bits together for the initial launch, which is to see not whether it will float, but how it floats and steers. The design and positioning of the crossbars will also take shape after I launch the two floats with a couple of planks attached. Now this way I can adjust the balance of the craft on the water and position the crossbars and cockpit assembly and work out my seating position. Of course the fundamental question of buoyancy had to be tackled before I started this project and I worked on the basis of an available maximum 12 cubic foot of space in my smart car for the floats. Now one cubic foot will float 62.5 pounds on fresh water, so my calculations are very comfortable for one fairly sturdy man and his dog, plus some fairly heavy batteries. The aim is to achieve a range of about 20 miles with the electric trolling motor, so two large batteries will be needed. Initially I'll test the craft using much smaller batteries that I already have, and then decide where to ultimately put the batteries for the best balance. The design of the floats has been based around storing two large batteries, but if funds allow, I may use much more compact car racing batteries. Once the basic craft is floating, I'll design the cross beams. In fact, the space in the smart car is a determining factor again. So I'm planning on using a piece of plywood to create the cockpit as such and possibly use stout aluminium tube which I can bend in my workshop. Uh, this will be quite a tricky part of the design. The completion of the floats will combine sealed buoyancy sections with storage compartments. So please watch this space for the next instalment. Mm -hmm.